Hi guys, welcome back to another video in relation to narcissistic abuse, particularly in the intimate relationship, which we cover mainly here on this channel. Welcome to anyone that's new to the channel. You are so welcome here to this army of people who believe in light, who believe in other people, who believe in humanity, who wish to expose the darkness so that it does not succeed in taking any more of our fellow army soldiers down. So I believe once we understand what we were dealing with, we can then heal. We can then focus on ourselves, bring the focus back to ourselves, rediscover who we are and flourish. And at that point, when you do that, when you do those two things, one, understand what you were dealing with in the narcissistic individual, and two, focus on yourself, self-care and healing, the narcissist has lost. It's as simple as that. So here's another video in understanding what a narcissistic personality disordered person does, is, behaves, thinks, in order for you to validate your experience and what you've been through and move forward. So guys, we were doing a series on the new supply, which is a very, very difficult um, part of the abuse cycle to accept where the narcissist, your, your partner, your intimate partner, first of all, you know, leaves you or is cheating on you uh, at the drop of a hat with no prior warning. And then secondly, belts you, you know, over the head with their new supply. I kind of have this picture of this, um, you know, blow up doll model of the new supply and the narcissist going, you know, right over your head. Anyway. We have to bring a bit of humour into this because it is extremely painful if you have been, first of all, discarded and then you realise that, that this person is marching off into the sunset, not a bother on them, apparently, um, and suddenly found the love of their life yet again for the 10th time and is swooning off with this person who is everything you're not, absolutely 100% perfect, and basically torturing you and getting pleasure, pleasure from it, knowing that you are, you know, on the floor in pain with this, as any normal person would be, because this is not normal. This isn't normal. So if you are on the floor and in a dreadful state, it's a healthy reaction to something that's very, very abnormal. And the fact that this person is going off with this, as we term in our community and you supply, is so messed up, is so messed up, it'll tell you exactly, if you think about it, how they feel about the person they're going off with. Because it is not possible to form um, such a loving bond when you're still in one relationship with another person immediately and purport to love this person dearly, suddenly. So, if you can kind of see behind the smoke screen and mirrors and analyze it, you will understand that the narcissist is not capable of love, which may help. It should help in your healing. Once you get rid of the cognitive dissonance, once you get out from under the narcissist spell and some people actually find it like that, they find, I know I did, that there's a fog that you're kind of nearly attached to the narcissist still and you're not seeing things clearly. All you're feeling is pain and working your way through the pain, you then you then see the light the more you educate yourself on what you've been through or the more you actually objectively look at the situation. Then you understand if you look at their actions, what the motivation is behind the actions and the image that they're giving of being in love totally dissip dissipates because it's not possible. And you, you begin to see that and you begin to see the absurdity, the absolute nonsense that narcissists go on with. 
And the only way it's valid is if you make it valid by believing in it. Otherwise, it, it's apparent to everyone else. It's just you giving it the validity gives them the the truth or gives them the kind of the belief that they do exist and that what they're doing is actually true. So the power all lies with you and you will get to that point when you understand that fully. And it's very validating and it's very empowering too to know that you've actually totally won if there's any kind of battle going on between you feeling very rejected by the narcissist and abused. Anyway, to get back to the subject of the video, we're dealing with the new supply. And this video is going to cover the narcissist meeting another narcissist. And this is an interesting one because sometimes it can appear in this situation that, you know, it's, it seems to be really believable because the two of them are acting up. The two of them are kind of splashing everything all over social media and they're both delighted with themselves because they both think that they've, you know, won the lotto with the person that they're, they, they've engaged in. So narcissists can fool each other initially because they both love bomb very well. It takes them a while to actually understand that the other person isn't susceptible to the testing when they start testing after the love bombing stage to see how much the other person is hooked. The other person doesn't react. The other narcissist doesn't react like an empath would. The other narcissist is more curious because remember, they haven't attached to the the partner. So they're not as um, they're not emotionally invested in this. This is a very, very transactional relationship between two narcissists. So they won't lose control by giving in to the push pull. You know, when the narcissist kind of pulls away from you or gives you a silent treatment or disappears for half a day without contacting you where they've been in total contact all the time with you before. And you begin to start to wonder why this sudden change of behavior. The other narcissist won't react to that because they don't want to lose control and show the other person that it's actually worrying them at all. So it's a very kind of gamey kind of thing. And the other, the narcissists each do this to each other and kind of realize, hmm, this one isn't as easy to control as the others were. What's going on here? And they get a good sense that the other person is really copped on to them. However, this, this if they have a joint purpose in mind, will sit with them and they'll both vie for control over the other, but not to a huge extent initially because they want to keep things going because they have an end goal in sight. So they'll each be getting something from each other. So supposing, just to simplify it, one person might be getting money and the other person might be getting sex and somewhere to live. It, it, it just, whatever they're after, they will be focused on the end goal. So they will manage the situation where the push-pull doesn't work. They'll keep trying to get control over each other. But if they're getting their needs met in a transactional way, they'll mull along with this for quite some time. However, the relationship will be full of drama, full of chaos, as one tries to overcome the other control-wise. So you're never going to get a kind of a peaceful flow. Now, to the outside world, they won't show this because they want to present the perfect relationship they also want to, they'll both have old supplies. They'll want to be, you know, whacking over the head with the new supply. So they'll both have this end game in mind where the perception of their relationship to the general public will be one of these two are really made for each other. And by God, they are actually really made for each other. They're both as bad as each other. So you may think that they have an amazing relationship. 
this comes apart at various different points if there is a control battle which there always is going on and if one narcissist gets more control than the other and these kind of control battles can be horrendous you can have um police called you'll have family members involved there'll be inter-family fighting um one narcissist will leave the other frequently you know they'll be apart as 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 long as they're together they'll be apart as much as they're together they'll be fighting for their way over things to have their way like over a say over their kids maybe if they have kids together um they'll be pulling control games like one will say withdraw um withdraw sex from the other if they know that the other wants it uh they'll use money they'll use whatever they need to so all this is going on as in a mishmash of a dreadful relationship at home but you won't see it so just believe believe when the outcome comes that they were with a narcissist and i'm going to get to that now so the relationship can mosey on even over a number of years the toing and the froing and the one narcissist pulling this way and the other narcissist pulling that way if they still have an end goal in mind so they may have decided, say, to set up a business or they may they may have decided that they want to achieve something together. Like if they pool their resources, they can maybe build a holiday home together or uh, they can do better together. They can make a lot of money. Remember, both narcissists have magical thinking so they can convince the other that they're going to get all their dreams come true um, and that together they're better. So, so despite the battles and the dramas and everything, they will have this focus in mind, which will keep them together. But if something goes wrong with the end game for either narcissist or both, supposing they lose all their finances, they lose all their money, having maybe gone into a ridiculous business that was never going to succeed or one of them gets sick or one of them is needed more with the family or something or things have gone wrong on one side then you'll see everything coming apart very quickly there's no like i'll support you in this or I, you know i'll stick with you this isn't a normal human relationship this is a business arrangement a transactional relationship so what then, Paula, if something doesn't go wrong and they're going on five or six years and they seem to be making progress in amongst the chaos? They may come to a point where they will decide, and you often see this in more famous kind of coupledoms, narc coupledoms, where they're making progress in their lives together and it's better for them to stay together as a couple perception wise maybe in the world of politics or business or they're both getting their needs met very very well by this partner for instance maybe one of them maybe the husband or the wife is very rich and this is a very important to the other person this um, way of life and maybe the husband or the wife it's very important that they're with somebody who's good with other people who supports them in their career and um, for their own gains but is a good person to have as a partner or is very good looking there'll always be a tip and a toe if you know what i mean there'll always be it has to be beneficial to the other at the same level if they decide that it would be less beneficial to separate then they will live separate lives together so they'll both have, you know, it'll be like an open marriage. They will both be getting their kicks or their other supplies or whatever they need that they're not getting from the narcissistic partner. They'll be getting it elsewhere. So in both scenarios, it's a really, really dysfunctional, quite dark relationship. And narcissists, if, if this isn't the long term beneficial relationship and they're having you know separate lives and they do break up where one narcissist isn't able to keep their end of the bargain in their relationship it will be a horrendous breakup 
because they'll both be battling against each other to gain control of the breakup and then to punish each other for it not working out. Uh, they'll feel extremely, extremely um, disgusted at the other person not keeping their end of the deal because they know, they know that this other person is like them. And so they look at other people all in their own right, but they look at empathic human people and, you know, they're suspicious of them. But when they come across another narcissist, they know for sure that this person is exactly like them, has cannot be trusted. They have a fair idea. They can nearly sniff another narcissist out, but they've decided that they'll stay with them because it's beneficial. They know quite quickly that they're with another narcissist. So they will be doing their damnedest to protect themselves against this person, gain control over them and give them a terrible, you know, a terrible time. And post breakup and this can go on for years they will hate the guts of this other person for years and they'll always be you know emailing each other or contacting each other or trying to destroy the other's life like if one narcissist has moved on to a good situation and the other narcissist sees it they'll try and do their best to interfere and knock it down and break it down so there are fairly vicious demons here going on in the battle of the demons uh, post the breakup it's pretty dire. There will often and nearly always be police involved either in the, the pre-breakup stages or in the breakup stage. Um, the law is often called in and, you know, one narcissist will try and use the law to beat the other narcissist down or to interfere with their new relationships. They'll often try and not give the other person, say, hide money, not give the other person what they're entitled to, drag them through court situations. Um, they'll, they'll just, it's just horrible. It's horrible what they get up to. They will go to great lengths to try to destroy the other person. But the funny thing is, after this has kind of settled down, and they get into new relationships with other people. If those relationships don't work out, or if one, you know, if one, say, narcissist ends up destroying the other narcissist's relationship, they kind of come back together in a certain type of way because they have this type of respect for each other. Because they respect um, transactions. They respect someone who they feel is copped on to other people. They respect someone who is hard, who doesn't kind of care. They know that there's no empathy there and this other person will do whatever they have to do to get their own way and to make sure they're looked after themselves. And because that's who they are, they kind of respect that. They have a respect for the other narcissist. They don't want anything to do with them anymore. But if one of one narcissist ends up in the middle of the ocean with no raft, the other narcissist will often paddle by and say, hey, jump up here, Jimmy, for a while and I'll give you a ride to the shore. It's kind of like they'll back each other up if there's something in it for them still. So if they feel there's a gain to be had, they'll narc about with the other narcissist for a while intermittently, you know, between supplies and stuff because they kind of have this understanding, non-spoken understanding, that they know how to live life best. And all the other Egypts out there, Egypt is an Irish word, by the way, it's not complimentary. So it's, um, it's, it's the Irish for idiot, actually. I don't know if any of you guys use it, but I just thought I'd throw it in there. Um, it kind of is a good description of how the narcissist sees human beings and empathic people. They really think we're stupid where nothing could be further from the truth. None of none of you guys are stupid. I'm not stupid. We're highly intelligent people who got sucked in um, because we were emotionally vulnerable or at a vulnerable time and didn't understand that there are these type of disordered people out there. So I digress again, guys, going back to the narcissist on narcissist action. It is chaotic, 
it's dark. It's all about image perception when they're together. They will seek, um, rather than seek joy, peace and happiness, which is alien to them, they will seek success, material gain, notoriety, fame. Uh, they will want other people to be envious and jealous of them. So the perception of their union, so to speak, has to be a perfect, perfect one. Um, things like houses and cars and all those kind of things, or say academic status, all those kind of things, status symbols are highly important to them. And they will stay with another narcissist if the other narcissist is beneficial to their end game. And it will often be, and please leave in the comments if you've discovered this, that your narcissist has gone off and has gained in relation to the monetary values in life and therefore has stayed with this person for a number of years. So you're kind of wondering maybe why you did, you're not getting a Hoover immediately or a year down the line and they still seem to be quite happy in this new union. I'm telling you behind closed doors, there is a vile amount of arguing, dissatisfaction, chaos, um, misery going on in order for them to stay together to achieve their aims. So that's the new narcissistic supply, I think covered, hopefully. Any questions, guys, leave them in the comments. And I'll try and cover them in the next video. So we'll stick with the series on the new supply. We'll do another video on the new supply. And if there's anything you want covered in the next video, please leave that down in the comments and I will try and cover it in the next video on the new supply. In the meantime, stay safe, stay warm. We've had storms here in Ireland, really bad storms. It was called a weather bomb actually. So we're just recovering from that. And yeah, it's that time of year, isn't it? So wherever you are in the world, stay safe, get ready for Christmas if you're gonna celebrate that um, festivity. And I will see you soon with another video. Bye.